Welcome to the video on using Excel to calculate customer lifetime value. My name is Jeff. I'm a marketing lecturer at the University of Sydney and I'm going to use two methods to calculate lifetime value. The first is the simple calculation okay, and it is appropriate to use when customer revenues and customer retention rates don't change much over time and the company just wants a, a ballpark figure of customer lifetime value. I've already set up an example for you. In this case it's three and a half thousand customer lifetime value. So let's take this out and work out how we do that calculation. I put these three variables in blue because these are the data inputs. This is what we need to know to do the calculation. What's it cost on average to acquire a customer? In this case, $500. What's the average profit per year from a customer? In this case, $1,000. And what's our retention or loyalty rate each year? Okay, and I've put in this example using 75%. First thing we need to calculate is our churn rate. That's just the opposite of the retention rate. So it's simply 1 minus the retention rate. As you can see, these two numbers add up to 100. This is the percentage of customers we keep. This is the percentage of customers that lose or do not continue their business. With this number, the 25%, we can easily calculate the average lifetime in years of a customer. And that formula is simply 1 divided by the churn rate. So the average customer stays for, with us for four years. Some leave after year one, uh, some will stay 10 years plus, but on average, four years. Once we have that information, we can go, okay, the formula for customer lifetime value is how many years do we have a customer times what profit do we make? So years times profit, and then we take off or deduct the acquisition costs. So they're the three variables in the calculation and we get back to our three and a half thousand dollar customer lifetime value. Okay, there's no discount rate included, but as a, as a good estimate, it is quite effective. This is the more complete customer lifetime value formula. Uh, you'll notice a couple of changes. First, we've got different years. This allows us to input different profits and retention rates on a year-by-year -year basis. This is more realistic because these things are going to change over time. The other thing I've added is a discount rate. In larger companies, uh, a discount rate is, is usually incorporated into long-term forecasts. And what we're trying to work out is our, as our long-term customer lifetime value at the end of five years. So we've got to populate that number. Okay, I've added a little, a little bit more detail here. The yellow is where we're going to calculate numbers. What I'm looking at is total cost. So let's say we spend a hundred thousand campaign to acquire customers and we end up with two hundred customers. Okay, normally that's how you would look at it. So the average is simply what did we spend in total and how against how many customers do we get? And for this example I've just brought it back to the $500. So the average customer has cost $500. Keep in mind some of those just saw us on the internet and were quite cheap and others were acquired through perhaps personal selling or very high cost methods but on average $500. Please note that I've entered that as year zero. Okay, The timing of the years become important for the discount rate. So if we're launching a new product or a new campaign we spend the money up front, um, perhaps six months into development for a, for a product or a major campaign, and the revenues don't start to come into future years. Okay, so when I put in revenues and costs, that's always, always going to be starting in year one. But let's say we'll start at $500, and I'm going to increase that by $500 a year. So I'll just bring that across. So in year one, we make a revenue or income from a customer equal to $500, year five, 
The reason is that companies will work hard to uh, market and upsell existing customers, sell them more products, make them more loyal, etc. Uh, customers will do that automatically because they feel more comfortable with the brand at, or, or the company. So an increasing customer revenue over time is quite logical. For costs, this is the cost of providing and generating that revenue, so a, a product cost or a service cost. Uh, we can put our number in, or we can just work out a, a margin based on the company. So I'm going to put in a cost proportion of 60%. Okay, I'm going to do that as a formula because as revenues go up, costs automatically go up. Okay, so that in this case we're making a 40% margin. This is probably the best one to look at. We get a hundred dollars, a thousand dollars in, 600 goes in costs, and we have 400 dollars or 40% margin left over. So to work out profit per year is just the the difference of those two numbers. Okay, so in year one for the first year customer we make 200 dollars, and if we still have them at year five, we make a thousand dollars. Next thing we want to enter is retention rate. Now we're going to start at 100%. That doesn't mean we've retained, but what we're looking at is uh, we've won some customers. These 500, uh, sorry, 200 customers at $500 each, we have them. So in year one, they're a customer. Then in year two, we measure, okay, what's the retention rate? So I'm going to say, you know, it wasn't that great, 60%. But then I'm going to increase it. Now these numbers are going to come off uh, historical data or analysis for the company. Okay, and this is a logical formula. First time customers, we get, they all buy from us. The second year, some of them don't see value, 40% of them leave. Okay, we have left 60% of them. Okay, we continue forward. These numbers increase and there's a reason for that. Customers who are dissatisfied are more likely to leave early. They're hardly going to be a customer for five years and go, I'm not happy. So you're going to get rid of a lot of customers early who don't see value in the offering. As customers continue, there's a loyalty factor, there's a comfort factor, there's a, you know, a, a being buying off the person or the business for a long time. So it's just a, a habit purchase. And what our next task is to work out the running total or the compounding retention rate. So we know in year one we've got 100%. The second year we have 60% of the 100%. The third year we have 65% of the 60%. Year four we have 70% of that 39%. And then finally we have 75%. So all, I could also just drag that, do it once and, and drag it across, okay? But I'm just showing you. So in this case, we get down to 20%. So what's happening here is we have 100% of customers, then we have, of that intake, 60% of them left. And then the following year, 39% remain, so we get down to uh, 20%. So this is just compounding down. So only 20% of our customers will actually be buying from us in year five. Okay, that's important because it helps us calculate the next line. So I'm going to multiply that running total of retention rates by annual profit. I'll just bring that back to uh, no decimals and I'm going to copy that across. Okay, what we have Obviously, that's uh, got a decimal place in it. In year five, we've got likely profit of $200, so $205. What does this mean? Okay. As we go forward, this running total of retention rate represents the likelihood or the, or the profit probability, the probability of receiving that money in the future. Okay, so in year one, we know we make $200. So we've got that $200. Fantastic. Let's go to year five. For every customer that we still have, we'll make $1,000. Okay. 
But the reality is, the likelihood is we only have, the probability is going to be around 20%. That means only one in five of those customers will be giving us that profit in five years time. So that's one customer where we make $1,000 from and four customers that are left us so we make zero. So in terms of estimating the future profit, we just multiply the probability of them being a customer by the profit. And that's why we have this sort of array of numbers which are all around the 200 mark, even though revenues are going up and even though profit is going up, it's balanced out by the fact that we are losing customers. So we've got a more profitable customer but a smaller customer base. Uh, and that's why that number doesn't seem to shift a lot. The next thing we want to put in is the discount rate. And we start a discount rate at 1 and I'm going to use a discount rate of 10%. So we're going to multiply 1 times 1.1 and I'm just going to drag that across. So each year is compounded. And I'll just bring that back. So that there is 1.1 and add another 10%. Add another 10%. So it's compounding. It's like compounding money in a bank. Okay. That allows us to discount money going forward. Okay. And that's important if a company has a required rate of return or an investment hurdle rate. So that's usually in the order of 10 to 20%. And that allows us to calculate these future numbers on present value. Okay, so as you can see, we're getting $200 in year one. The company can get that profit reinvested in something else. This $200, we're not getting that until year five. So we 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 can't use it for another five years. It's it's tied up. It's it's a future promise. So it's not as valuable to the firm. So we need to discount it. Okay, so all we do, there's two calculations here, because acquisition cost is right up there. That comes in divided by one, so that's not going to change. And then I discount the rest. So profit, we're getting some time after we've done the, the setup and the campaign. So I'm dividing profit by the discount rate. Again, I'll just bring that back. And that goes across, copied across. So as you can see, again we'll look at the year 5 number, 205 is likely to come in, a 1 in 5 customer chance to make $1,000, but because it's so far out in the future, it's equivalent to $127 today. There'd be no difference to the company to making 205 in the future or taking that $127 today and investing it in another successful campaign or another investment opportunity. Now we're in position to calculate the running total of custom lifetime value and determine where we'll be at the end of year five. Now acquisition costs are negative, so we bring that down as a negative. And then we go, okay, the first year we made $182 in today's money, and I'm going to add that in. So we've spent $500, we've got some money back, we're still down $300. Okay, the same thing happens. I've added $198, so I'm slowly catching up. And then finally, in the last year, so our customer lifetime value is $332, just the running total of that. Because it's positive, it's good. Because we have a discount rate, it's fantastic. Our customer investment, this $100,000, has paid back more than uh, 10%. Let's increase this to 20%, this uh, discount rate. Okay, and I'll just copy that across. Even a 20% discount rate, we still have a positive customer lifetime value, which means this $100,000 has proven uh, through this you know, array of uh, cash flows, it still outperforms a 20% return. If you have any questions on this, contact me on my website uh, on customer lifetime value with the link below.